and I showed up to Winnipeg. I left my laptop at the airport on the way there, which I never recovered. So here I am going for a writer's boot camp. I show up in Winnipeg in February. I'm like, hi, uh, my name is Molly. I'm the writer of this film. I don't have a computer. Um, so it was a bumpy start, and, you know, when I met with them, they said, first of all, they said, you're so different than we thought. And I said, what do you mean? Um, and I tend to write a lot about grief and loss and all this stuff. And they said, you're very, like, you're very light and you make a lot of jokes. We just expected someone a lot darker. But uh, I explore that side in my work. Um, and I, I showed up and they said, look, we think you're a strong writer and we believe in you. We think you need a different script. So I, I just... Started from there, and this is kind of film um, that I wrote there. So you did something <laughs> darker. <laughs> yeah, or just um, the original script was focused more on one character and the mother, and the kind of the progression through the illness and the death. But when I spoke to them, it became apparent that like we've seen people have cancer and die on screen, right. but it's more of an unusual perspective to look at it later, you know? And that's that's more of interest to me. That's where I'm at right now in my life. Like, it's been seven years, but... Do I think about my mother every day? Mostly, but it's like that grief is processed through decisions I make or how I interact with people. Yeah. And, and, and the focus on how it affects other people rather than the cancer and the person who has the cancer. I think is important. Yeah, and and also no, you're I, fairly young, so you you were fairly young when your mom died. Yeah, I was, it was weeks after I graduated from college, I was 21. Yeah. Um, so it was hard, and and how. Um, so for me, thematically, I was interested in the idea of I am my mother, but I am not my mother. I am my father, but I am not my father, and how all of us are that. Yes. And so, so struggling to release yourself from this preconceived notion that one parent's fate is going to be yours. And I think that's very much a universal concept. And, you know, this last month, I just turned 29. And luckily, I live in Canada where healthcare is covered. But because of my, given my history, I was referred to a high cancer risk screening program. So I had my first mammogram and MRI and ultrasound. And they got the, I think they got the MRI back and they called me in again and they don't say why. And I'm like, holy shit, I am living out the plot of my movie. Like, this is the character who, then all those thoughts are turning. And I had to go back to the hospital my mother died in to go for these tests. So I was like, oh my God, it's very out of body experience. But, um, you know, the nurse was like, I, I, same scene in my movie. Like, we understand so that you're going to be concerned, but you're fine. Um, so that was kind of bizarre. <laughs> what, did, what did your sister say about the movie? Uh, the two characters are all of them kind of distilled into two. So I couldn't possibly represent all five of us. Like, Irish Catholic, very strong set of women, but I took elements from all of us, and when I showed it to them, some of them were like, that that totally was you, or that was me, and they were picking out who they were, um, but you know, the characters are completely fictional, but how can they not represent my sisters in some ways, but I feel like making this film, I hope I have a long career ahead of me, but um, there's a saying that says, uh, you make the films you need to before the ones you should. And I feel like this one was my need. I needed to to, to say this. And I think themes of grief and, and female relationships will always play out in what I'm drawn to and what I create. Um, but this, for me, was a gift to my mother and to my family because it was turning that absence and that space into something tangible. Is there anything particular you want the audience to pick up? Hmm. That's, why is that a hard question? I hesitate to answer that because I like 
the idea of whomever watching it projects their own relationship to their family or to grief or to loss onto it, but I wanted it to be hopeful. I don't, I still maintain that the people I know who have gone through the most difficult things are the most joyous. They will laugh harder and longer. Yeah. And so that, I want that to be the takeaway. I don't want it to be like a mopey, sad film about cancer. I want it to be hopeful. Well, and I suspect, I'm, I'm guessing here that you were making this for yourself, not for an audience. In some ways, and, and I feel like that's so narcissistic, but I guess so. And I, I, I used to work for um, Deepa Mehta, who is like a very well-known filmmaker. And she used to quote a line from Louis Bunuel, the filmmaker, who said, the moment you become, the moment you are specific is the moment you're universal. And so in that sense, if, if you create something for you that's specific to you and you're specific about it, those experiences translate universally. Yeah, and you know, I don't think it's narcissistic because it's, it's, you're doing what you think is important. And if it works, then it'll work for other people as well. Exactly. It's your truth that you're sharing with other people. Mm -hmm. But I have, I have to say it's um, this and the film I made before this and some writing I've done online, I tend to be very open. Like I'm very like transparent and I wear my heart on my sleeve. And I have to say I was a little bit emotionally exhausted after this. And I was like, I just want to make like a zombie film after this. I want to get away a little bit. 